What is going on, everyone? And welcome to the first streamed game of season 14, the first streamed game of the OTC season. My name is Septilence, and I am here with my co-host, Jag. Hey, everyone. Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us on this very wonderful Wednesday night. We're so happy to bring you this game. Really exciting action coming your way from the Diamond Division. We have Blink Strike and Press W E Gaming going at it in their first match of the season. But they uh, played in the preseason. Um, what do you think of those results that we saw in the preseason? I definitely think we're going to see uh, possibly a stronger comp coming from Press W here. They were lucky enough to, or they were skilled enough to win their first game of the season versus Blink Strike, who didn't end up losing that preseason. But I mean, we've seen it in OWL, we've seen it at every rank. The preseason games really don't mean as much as we might think. I think we really might see Press W come out on top, but everybody loves a good underdog and a good turnaround, but I'm excited to see a close game no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. I'm really excited to see what Blink Strike's going to pull out here. Uh, maybe the underdog, but, you know, there's still a dog that's going to be going down fighting. Um, where we do know, so far, at least for the first map, they're going to Li Jong. What do you think we're going to be seeing here for both teams? Most likely on Li Zhong, it really depends what map we're on, but I expect to see something along the lines of a Farah because she gets a lot of value recently, now or maybe an right Echo in the place of the Farah yeah. is something that we've been seeing a lot lately. I think both teams, we're probably going to see Orion Zarya as we are on that Li Zhong Tower Control Center. Orion Zarya, or possibly match. a double shield if they want to get that point access really early and play more of a defensive comp over an offense here. Absolutely. You know, right now, these teams are probably thinking, what do we want? Do you want to kind of go for more of that Brawly comp with the Ryan Zarya? Maybe try to run over the other team, maybe even get a May in to separate them off. You know, that Ryan, that poor, poor Ryan, whenever that May wall comes up, you know that he's going to be the first target. But the double shield, very viable here as well. More point control, more sustain. So it's going to be really exciting, especially if we see Ready two different comps. And uh, looks like so far a little bit different. Things are a little scattered, a little separated. I'm definitely seeing uh, we're seeing a little bit more defensive healing coming from um, Press W Gaming here. Absolutely, they have uh, the back and the Ana. A lot of healing. That anti is huge, but we see speed on the side of Blink Strike. You know, a little more of a hybrid brawl comp. Um, and here we go. We're about to be off to the races. I highly expect to see probably a Symmetra teleport in here. The objective. We do see these gates opening up here. Both teams are getting aggressive in this little cubby, in this high ground. We've got both rounds out of place. The Maywall comes out very early to try to separate things. Forcing out of immortality field as well. With that immortality field being down, that's going to be a serious cooldown. But it looks like they are going to come out on top anyway with the Reinhardt controlling a very early kill on their Something that's really lucky. He gets a pin kill as well. We're seeing a huge advantage, and we're going to see the point cap come from Press W Gaming. They did not win this preseason on a win here. Absolutely, they took that first fight, and even though it was a mega all that got, you know, the Ryan, it kind of got everyone else as well, so they weren't really able to capitalize on that at all. And that Junkrat spam does so much damage in small corridors, you know, Blink Strike might have to rethink coming out a different way instead of trying to push through this choke. We've got the re-engage, and on the Maywall coming out very early, but it's a really valuable cooldown to just throw down, but they're putting it down more to distraction to flank her on the side. They are going to get that slight high ground advantage, but with the Baptiste over the on press W here's got a much more defensive healing comp. They can really sustain themselves. Oh, the shatter is immediately picked up by Hawarrior. If that was a or not, fantastic timing. The nano boost comes to as well onto the line. Blink Strike here, a quadruple tire from Crispy in the back line just makes this fight instantly not worth it. All the ultimates gone to waste, a very unfortunate thing to see is it looked like for a brief moment Blink Strike had that fight in the bag, but with a tire like that you just don't have time to react. Absolutely, I mean that Maywall from Hot Warrior as you said, on purpose or not, but totally destroyed any chance that Ryan Shadow would connect. But here we're seeing that the BAP over the Lucio coming in is really helpful, but here's a square and already a pick. The pick comes through, two picks from both tanks, losing a tank and a support makes, again, this fight completely worthless. Blink Strike has to back out already with 70% already on the point. They're really looking at a difficult position. They're looking at a last fight scenario. They've barely touched the point. The only good news they have right now is they're going to have both tank alts online as well as maybe a male. That male alt could be huge. You know, all that you have on the side of Press WE Gaming is really that lamp for a defensive ability, so... Oh, but already a pick from the junk oh, rat. The shepherd from the junk rat, crispy wonton, carrying the team on his back at this point. That's two fights that he negated entirely on his own. 
It's just the ultimates and understanding the map geometry of the Junkrat to hit these nades at the important times. With the team pushing up on the high ground, they're going for that high ground advantage again. Mega Man left shift in, gets left shift right back out. The Blizzard does come through from the Warrior as the Ivy is the other side of the high. He picks up one. The Warrior gets what I think is the first kill from Blink Strike for this round. Oh, a double shatter from the Taking the enemy team out. It looks like it's just going to be a cleanup here for Press W Gaming, securing the first map 100 to 0. It's not quite over yet. Two headshots coming from Drafts and a shatter completely they blocked out. Press W Gaming just really has that first round in the bag. I'm yeah, absolutely. Fight. I think what we saw there was basically, uh, you saw a little bit of panic from Blink Strike School. at the end, you know, they were kind of rushing to the point, one. and then Shepard gets picked off, and that Lucio speed is so valuable, and once they realize, you know, we're not going to have our Lucio for this fight, that whole last attack kind of just fell apart, you know, all just kind of being thrown here and there, the Ryan charging and being killed early on, but, you know, this is a completely different map now, this is very good for dive, we might see some of that come in, Blink Strike might be able to turn it around here. I definitely would be surprised if if Press W stayed on this Rhino Rissa as with the Lucio on the other side, it's going to be very easy Five, for Blink Strike to get advantage four, of this bridge three, early on. And if they can get two, the early advantage over one, Press W here, things two, are going to look a lot better for them. The you see the Symmetra as well coming in, which is something that's very common, especially on this map and the remaining Night Market map for Lucian Tower, if we end up seeing it. They've already teleported out of the point with the early point presence from Blink Strike. They're in a much better spot to hold this map than they were last round. The Ryan immediately rolled up. He will most likely fall. He does end up going down. It's going to be an immediate 5v6. He's going to force Press W to move back on the fight. Jeff Reese's looking to get boops, but he's just separated from his team. Now they've got only one healer with the Ana. If they had the Baptiste instead, it would be a much easier for the solo heal. With, with Kaori getting another kill for his team, Cody falling not far behind. It looks like they're finally going to be able to get this point in their favor. And Blink Strike's going to come to life here and cap this point for us. I mean, Blink Strike did that perfectly, you know. They did the same thing last time where they tried to get the wall off. And last time it didn't work out. This time they were able to get that Rhine down and then he had no chance of surviving. But what concerns me a little bit right now is they seem very, very uh, kind of nervous. You know, they're trying to play aggressively. They need to stay on point to really take advantage of those sim turrets. They're looking really jittery here. I agree. The wall comes through again and if this Rhine gets picked off, it's going to be an immediate fight. But no, it's Ninja Freeze. He's taken off the map by the Demon Boosters. The Shadow comes through. Connects with the Blood. It's not going to be enough. It's Warrior has fallen, the Shatter connects, the, the Neta boost comes through as well, things are getting really good here, Paladin finds a kill on a crispy round time, the Echo maybe not getting as much value as they were hoping, the Paladin falls as well, the Shatter's blocked once again, it looks like the still could be ended with the pull coming through, but no Shatter to follow up on it, it's just gonna be whoever gets the next kill will get this point, as it's very close, it's currently a 3v3, with the 3v3 separated, no Mega Man finally falls, the wall comes through, but it's almost a waste of an ultimate, the fight's already lost, Press W has resealed this point in their favor, you know, only one ultimate was committed there, but it still was almost wasted as the fight was already lost, That's losing the main head. tank and two others just really made that a difficult fight to turn around. Yeah, and now Preston oh, really has here. a great ultimate economy. Three, not four ults on the board, basically gonna have a full deck to play with this time, and we only see two ults on the side of Blink Strike. Um, you know, when you've got a nano to Ryan, you kind of just have to go for the fences and swing into them, especially with that double shield comp. You're not going to be breaking shields. Might as well go for the kills of that hammer. But here we go again with the re-engage. Blink Strike trying to take this point back. They're going to re-engage re around the back, and with Regsa already having that shield, the Blink Strike won't matter. The Blizzard comes out very early. for Blizzard gets the Blizzard and the Orisa. The transformation comes to the Echo gets the hammer on the Ana. The beam being forced out as well, with a huge shatter coming from the Ana, picking up two. It looks like the press W gave him not going to lose this point. Yeah, they are going to make Blink Strike fight for it. The very quick turnaround, they used a lot of ultimates, actually all their ultimates to win that fight. Yeah, and honestly, you had to think, if you're a Blink Strike fan, that's kind of a win for them. You know, you were able to get six ults out in one fight and really only use uh, two of your own, I believe, only to beat in the mail. You're going to have Diva Bomb, you're going to have Nano, you're going to have Shatter. Um, so far, they have not really been successful with the Shatters, but maybe they'll try to go for a flank, maybe they'll focus more on Shield Break. Um, you know, really, the ball is in their court right now. Even could try to do maybe, uh, you know, a Bomb Shatter, throw that bomb in, get the Shatter if they're not looking for it, who knows? Ryan slept on the map. Pushing this map is really risky. Yeah, it's it's to really to the point we see yeah. Paladin slump on the map. He's yeah. a little bit late. A huge shatter does connect from Mega Man getting a double kick. So it's going to be the push they need. He cleans up half of the team with the nano shatter. And he moves over into the point. The bomb comes out almost unnecessary. As four of the players have already been. That was probably the fastest cleanup we've seen so far from Blink Strike. All they needed was that good shatter to reflip this point in their favor. I think what you saw there was Blink Strike really being able to take advantage of the fact that they have a brawl versus double shield. Using that Lucio Suite to really get them in there quick be able to run around those shields and just hit that fat shatter but you know now 
all the banks have kind of switched again. Now we're seeing more of them coming online. Uh, a few are going to be online this fight for Crest WE Gaming. And now of the Doomfist, maybe they're going to punch through. The Doomfist here is probably going to look for a pick on either the Lucio or the Honor, trying to get a pick on the support very early. So all they need to turn the fight around very quickly. And the connect does come through onto Regzo for the Strike. That's exactly what they were going to need to win this fight. Paladin proving the worth of that Ash. It's a risky swap this late in the game, but it's going to be worth it. It's already 70% to a Bob, where Bob can really make the break of fight. Mega Man left shift in trying to take the stragglers, but he is still out. Remember, he's got to play really careful. Both the tanks have moved off the point. They don't see Rexos coming behind them with the shatter. He's going to put pressure onto the point. But he's taken out, though, and even a solo shatter that's not going to come out. And he's going to be if the beat comes out of his It's now just moving to fall longer. They've really got to start cleaning up kills. They're down two already. Every single one flying out of the side of West Devil's gaming. But to me, it looks like we are going to end up seeing the back three here. To be forced out from Shepard, Chris Duantan does clean up the May, and things are looking very good for both teams, but Blink Strike is definitely still on top of this fight. No, excuse me, with another thing coming from Press WP Gaming. They are not ready to give this point up, but yet it is going to flip back in their favor. Yeah, that map three may or may not come, but look, right now, Press WE Gaming has the momentum and the point control. They will have the Nano online. We're going to have to see a really nice shatter come out for Mega Man here to retake this point, but they're running out of time. Only eight seconds left on the clock. Pull off the map, cleans up two, it's going to be it. Press W draft, help hit the button, and that's all they needed. The nano boost comes through almost for giggles as winning a 4v6 with the ultimate disadvantage is nearly impossible in a game as close as this one. <laughs> it's kill after kill at this point. The punch comes through onto the diva. The trades are not far behind, and Press W Gaming is getting very close. No, excuse me, they have confirmed the win for the first map of the evening. Yes, and you know, even though Blink Strike wasn't able to pull out the map three and the win. They did look a lot better on that second point, a lot more focused. Looks like they got a little bit greedy at the end. You know, the tanks chasing off point. You gotta wonder, maybe if they had played a little bit more patiently, if they could have held that. But Press WE Gaming will take map one here. But still, a lot of Overwatch to be played, anyone's game. The biggest difference I think we saw there was absolutely just the tank difference in regards to shatters being blocked and shatters being connected. Press WE Gaming blocked almost every single shatter that came out except for the first shatter we saw on the second map. Absolutely. I think another thing was that, you know, their tanks played really, really well together. They mostly ran the Orisa Orion, but they had really good synergy. The only thing that really stopped them was the Maywell or in Blink Strike kind of ran around them with Lucio speed, but even at the end, um, Welcome you can see Rialto. that we uh, they did a really good pull on um, the team and basically just boop them off the map with the Hammonds. It looks like we will be going back to lobby really shortly, and here we are. We are. Going back to lobby, in fact. There was definitely a difference in terms of the tanks, but the DPS went neck and neck very many times throughout that map. We saw a lot of very early picks from both teams. Yeah, I think uh, one match that we saw that was really interesting was Paladin. Uh, I believe on the Ash, you no, know, being able to kill a Doomfist, that's not an easy job. That's not usually a winnable match. Usually you want the McCree to go head to head with that. But, you know, when you've got a hit scan like that, who can hit those shots, you don't really need it. It doesn't matter what character they're on, you know, Tracer, Winston, uh, Winston uh, McCree, et cetera, et cetera. You know, you got to just trust them to hit the shots. So we could maybe see some Widow play because that's all about aim. The Widow play would be very exciting as it's often something we get to see on a lot of maps, but the Ash pick was definitely a risky one, but still a pick that seemed necessary for them to really confirm the winning fight, which they did. Although they lost the point, the Ash and the Bob gave them just a few more seconds to push forward and get back onto the point. Yeah, it would have been really great to see what could have happened if they'd been able to push, you know, as a full team. But, you know, that Hammond play at the very end, you know, Hammond, usually known for his stall ability, but on a map like that, when you can boot people off, perfect. Uh, looks like we are going... Going into Rialto very brief. We're having a sub come in as well. Poet in for hoodie. We will um, be having two subs come in. Inter being swapped out for draft as well. It looks like Press WE Gaming want to dig deeper into their roster. Do you think that's Welcome a little bit of a flex or do you think maybe more of a game plan? I think maybe a game plan is a lot of teams we know have heroes match. specifically to play a certain hero or play a certain map. Usually you see it a lot in DPS. There's either a hit scan or a projectile DPS being played, but I would be amazed if we didn't see a Widowmaker come out on this map. I'm not sure if they swapped out any damage heroes there, but I would not be surprised, like I said, if a Widowmaker comes out on this map. It's, there's just so many long open sight lines.
Yeah, another uh, here that's really good on this map is Farah, especially on this first point, kind of, you know, playing over the buildings, trying to get some spam damage in, maybe some Ready boops off that first bridge. Might even, a, like, a really close first hold, you never know. There's a lot of really great strategies for this map, and I'm excited to see which ones they decide to play. Yeah, the double shield comp coming out of Press WE Gaming here. It's not a surprise that they're probably Attack looking for that very early first hold seconds. and trying to play as little of this map as possible because defending first does give them that slight advantage of knowing just how far they have to push the cart. It looks like we'll be seeing a dive composition come out from Blank Strike. That should be really exciting, especially with the Tracer Genji. Throwbacks of what you might have seen in Overwatch League Season 1. Uh, except we've the Ana instead of the Zen, so definitely looking for Nano Blade as their fight win condition. Definitely in the game in the current meta right now, I think the Ana is going to be the more important important pick. Excuse me, the Mercy is the one that I'm concerned about. But as the gates open and the fight begins, we're going to see if this Mercy, Mercy excuse me, is the proper pick. Yeah, it looks like they're just trying to pop it with the Winston and Megaman already an immediate pick onto the Ash. Fantastic placement of the damage move from the Mercy. It's exactly what they needed to get into that fight and eliminate the Ash before she really had the time to react. The Junkrat and Christian Watts, and we saw him absolutely play the heck out of Junkrat on the last map, and we're going to see it again, I'm sure, as a lot of Rialto has very tight corridors, and an immediate pick on the Ana, almost as if he can hear what I'm saying is fantastic, as we see that he's got what it, he's got what it takes to play the Junkrat on this map. The fight is a little sloppy here as Blink Strike is not finding the ground they were hoping for with that immediate pick. They got stalled a lot earlier than I think they expected, and they're really going to need one more pick as the Ashes return to the fight. I am moving the payload. Well, the Ash is now McCree, excuse me, but either way, he has returned to the point. We, the Baptiste is going to be what makes the range of the fight here. Blink Strike is going to have to get rid of the Immortality through before they can really confirm any kills. They're pushing very deep into the back line, but Crispy Wonton is not going to let that happen without putting up a fight. It looks like... It looks like, excuse me, Press Round WE call. Gaming is going to clean up this fight very quickly and show Blink Strike. They're not here to mess around. We already see swaps coming from Blink Strike, and I'm excited to see where this next fight takes us. Yeah, it looks like they're swapping off the Ana for the Moira. It makes here. more sense. It makes, you know, because currently right now, this Ana is kind of just being left alone by her team, you know, so you just see Crispy Wonton say, hey, uh, I'm going to kill you. And this Ana said, really no state in the matter. And a tire coming in very tire early. Coming out very quickly from Crispy Wonton here. He's gonna he's gonna get greedy. He's gonna chase them all the way back into spawn. Probably confirm very little kills getting that close to the spawn door. As now they can just wait it out. But no, he's gonna confirm the kill on Mega Man, who stayed out in the open. A very unusual play from Mega Man, but he most likely planned to leap away, but just did not react fast enough. They're gonna look for the reds here. Shepard has yet to use that res. The Valkyrie's ready, so they could pop the Valkyrie just to get into that res a little bit quicker, but standing still is always the part you've got to be worried about. They're now instead going to wait for the respawn from Mega Man, who dives in kind of on his own a little bit, but the deep on the Mercy are very close to follow. This fight, again, we're seeing a much stronger defense from Press W than we are in offense from Blink Strike. The ultimates from Blink Strike are ready to go live, but Press W E Gaming is just a couple of percent away from each hero to almost having all of their ultimates except for the Junkrat. Junkrat, a little bit on the plate. The Junkrat playing the back line on that flank, it's something we've seen him do already quite a few times. You saw it on the early pick on Shepard last game, and he almost takes out Hawarrior as well. They're going to try to focus him down here, but then he's he does better. end up eliminating the Junkrat. A very, a very lucky kill for them to get us. Now it's a 5v6, and losing such, uh, such an important damage control, but the high noon square. No, the deep flank from Hawarrior takes out the second game. He has a fantastic turnaround. The enemy comes around to the single, and it might not be enough, as Blink Strike has finally come back to life, and are finally getting the part to move Vidiflex coming off from Rexa, he picks up two, confirms the kill onto the Warrior, and that's not what the Blink Strike needed. Even with the Warrior falling, the Blink Strike have confirmed this. They're going to get it at least right in front of this first point, but capping it is going to be the difficult thing to do here, as the Baptiste with the Immortality is installed for so much longer than they're hoping for. With no quick heroes coming in, they may be able to get this first point for free. There's the Immortality Guild as predicted, and the fight is an immediate cleanup. Blink Strike capping that first point, giving them just a little over three minutes. The fight's still not quite over. The Cole Lessons coming out from the Moira and putting a lot of pressure on the enemy team while keeping his own team alive. But with Mega Man falling, pushing at this point is just foolish. They're really going to have to move back here. We'll move back to the cards. They're not going to confirm any more kills without their Winston. Not yet. Man, you need a moment to catch your breath with how much action's been going on this round. I mean, this has been crazy. I, I think the two biggest moments we'll think about on that defense was using the tire a little bit early and using the land to try to save Chris Wilson, but another tire coming out right now. Tires, here comes the second. Who warriors taken out, not by the tire, but the bomb's coming out to follow. If they can get a pick here, they can keep pushing. But with the bomb picking up zero, they are gonna have to move back, unfortunately. 
Blink Strike trying to push this cart as far as they can. It's two and a half minutes. It's roughly two good pushes before they really start panicking. Bulldog comes through, does a lot of damage, but connects with zero. Crispy Wanton takes out Shepard as they're going to have to move back again. Losing that Lucio, losing that speed boost, and that extra healing is not what they're looking for at this point. Losing the mech as well, it has to be a full reset from them before they lose too much time. And it looks like this Check fight's this finally going to be over after a little bit of cleanup, only the more left. And I, I think the biggest thing we're seeing from Blink Strike right now is it seems like their tanks are a little scared to dive in. There seems to be a little, maybe a little bit of a miscommunication. They're usually waiting for a pickoff first from the DPS before they jump in, but as we're seeing here, now a full swap off of dive into their own double shield. Swapping into their own double shield, playing the more aggressive double shield as the Reinhardt gets a lot more value than the Orisa on the offensive when you have to constantly keep moving. It's very difficult for the Orisa to get the value she wants. The, the window comes out very early, forcing Blink Strike into the small corridor. With the junk rat on the enemy team, that's the exact place they don't want to be. The Sigma being picked out very early, they now have to wait nearly 30 more seconds for that Sigma to get back. Excuse me, more than rather 20 seconds with the ultimate advantage really on the side of Press WE giving. This might be where we see it end. Blink Strike may be held right here, right now. They've got probably one more good push before they really have to start committing everything they've got. But with an old advantage as serious as the one Press WE Gaming has right now, it looks like they're going to be ready to clean this up. The Gravitic Flux coming out early, as well as the Dragon. The shot out of the Gravitic Flux with the Nano Dude does Mega Man being caught in the middle. He's kind of scared with here. He will be falling to the Nano Sigma. That's another pick for them with a minute left on the clock and using the Chris Ultimus. This is giving Blink Strike a small window to move forward, but they have to win this in a drive push. Still in an ultimate disadvantage. Another tire comes out, but it's picked by Paladin. Paladin will not die to another tire today. No. And you better wonder, uh, they're using these tires really early. They could really save them for the fight. Oh, Maybe they're like, hey, we're winning. Must just throw everything we got at them to make sure we clean everything up. Only the McCree off online right now for Press WE Gaming almost have the flux. But we're going to see a Nano. We're going to see a few off the side. And, oh, and Trey's already coming out. He's got the shatter, but he slept when he uses the shatter does not connect. Another Gravitic Flux comes from Red, but, the, but excuse me, the beat is there to catch him. The Sigma falls anyway, as is this Mega Man with 10 seconds left on the clock. Blink Strike's gonna need a miracle to push this court any further. It's almost like it's all she wrote, but they do have the spawn up, and no one can talk to you. They have people alive. Uh, uh, they had the fighters there, but could not touch the cart in time, possibly Score. due to a pull from Inter. Zero to one. Yeah. Switching and sides. my question is, if you're swapping off of Dive, why do you keep the Genji? I know he has Blade, Initiating and you know, match. that can be a great fight win, but when you don't have Nano, Blade is much weaker, especially when you have so much CC on the side of Press WE Gaming. And I think that late swaps, the Echo not really being able to build up an all uh, really hurt them in the long run, but they did get the first tick, they did get halfway through point two. Holding point one is very possible for them. Holding point one's definitely a possibility, and I've got to agree that Genji pick just didn't sit right with me either. Even with the dragon, they didn't have the nano boost at the time, Ready and the blade got very little value. It was something that they probably should have swapped off of earlier, while giving up an ultimate may feel like if you're giving up the fight, in fact, another hero may have done more damage. Possibly an Echo swap earlier could have really put them in a much better spot Attackers to get faster picks as Genji's really only seconds. valuable at close quarters. Well, what we're seeing right now really is the difference between the supports, I think. Not in the play necessarily, but just, you know, which characters are using and the abilities. That lamp has been so big for most of you. They've used it perfectly. And, you know, it's kept them alive and able to get alts out that clean up fights. And now, uh, we're finally seeing it come out for Blink Strike, but again, we're just Five, seeing the Mercy pick, four, so less healing. Three, two, less healing's one. gonna not be good for them in this defense, they should want to stand here as long as possible. They're most likely subbing out the healing to get that res, that resurrection to get, bring a hero back into the fight. But getting the resurrection off is much more difficult than most people expect. <laughs> the fight will begin now with a very early dynamite coming out for Paladin. They're gonna look for values already halfway to a bob, which is rather impressive. But with Baptiste immediately falling right, it's gonna be very difficult to find this one. The resurrection does prove that it's gonna be more than they need. The mortality kill is not far to follow. Both teams have a Baptiste. Both the mortality kills are now out and have both been destroyed. No teams have the invincibility they're looking for. You see a full rotation into the small building and an 8 back out from Preston. Get this fight 
fight. Like I said, things are not looking super good here for either team. As this quarter is very difficult to play, either defensively and offensively, until you get a huge kick, which the McCree will do, almost as if he's hearing my words. The warrior falls two more fall right away. That might already be the three point half for press W. It looks like it is. They will be able to maybe recontest for Blink Strike. Not all the way there yet. Uh, I think it's really interesting. You usually do not see this on a bat of a brawl comp. You really want that Lucio for the speed, but they're just keeping, you know, Press W Gaming alive. They don't need the speed if they can just outlast. And so far, they are. It looks like Link's Rick should be able to recontest. Here comes the ball from Paladin with the window from. From Press W, you can much more get in there. Yeah. 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 Smoke Bob down here, yeah. and the Shatter's gonna connect, but no, Bob's gonna get more kills. Bob gets the end game. Jump right. A Shatter comes out, connects with two. Link Strike is not ready to give this fight up yet. They are not going to go down without a serious fight. They may have committed a few more ultimates than they wanted to, but it did get them the early fight, and if they can hold just two more good fights, they can put this map under their belt. And it looks like there might have been a miscommunication there. The Nano ending up on Crispy Wonton. Gotta wonder if it was meant for Inter instead. But here we are. All the banks looking sort of similar. One more on the side of Press WE Gaming. But they do have the tire, which could be the fight one. The tire can win the fight because if they get that grab tire combo and immortality field is not there to save them, it's going to be a really difficult fight to win. Oh, oh, it comes very early and takes a warrior out of the fight very quickly. A 5v6 in these first with a slight spawn injury, the grab does connect with that tire. Oh, no. Serious trouble here with Link Strike. The window and the Gravitic Flux are out quickly. Nobody falls playing yet, but Inter does Get fall in there, too. Sigma, the player is now out and ready, takes out Reinhardt. The team is down, both tanks, Bob slept as well. It's gonna be a difficult one to win as Chris Mulan ends up his second kill. The res does not connect onto Mega Man, or does, excuse me, he's taken out right away. Ho Warrior trying to hold the card for as long as possible to get this 3v4. Ho Warrior, wait, excuse me, Ho Warrior with an absolutely massive play, takes out two of them, the point 0.16 no meters me. tilted over the Neta Boost coming through onto the McCree. He's looking to get these picks as quickly as he can, but Link Strike is coming to life in the best way possible. They are not ready to give this point up. Mega Man takes a nap on the payload. 60 seconds. And the ult charges are getting very close with two, what, two ultimates on the side of Press WE Gaming in zero. Very close. The Shatter connects with one, but it's blocked by others. The warrior dies. He must have been over the water and fallen in. The charge comes through, does not kill anybody. A Reinhardt down all the way down from 0.01 meters away from Captain Recruit. The Reinhardt will come out. Crispy Wontai cleans up the bat piece, and the point is finally tapped. The fight's still not quite over, but Press WB is in very good shape to clean up this fight, and with a spawn disadvantage, it's going to be difficult now for Blink Strike to get back to the point. And so many nanos going out in that fight, which is the DPS, which I thought was a really interesting choice. But in the end, Press WE Gaming able to get them off point with that ball, which we're seeing come out. I'm, I'm surprised they even swapped off of it. Dredson now in the back line, barely staying alive, finding that mega at the back line. I think I'm surprised they're still playing that Mercy. They really feel I need more healing. He's pushing it as a rest of the fight too. The Gravitic Flux does come through from the Sigma. It picks up, it picks up a few, but Rex's bombs are bigger than tired to suit. It looks like Press WP can just clean this up with two ultimate half teams still alive. They're gonna need some very high level plays to get us the resurrection coming in this group, but just in time for the rest of the team to die. Press WP getting ready to write the end of this story and it looks like they will successfully cap this second point, putting them at a 2-0 advantage over Blink Strike. That was a very exciting map. Even though it wasn't the longest map you've ever seen in Overwatch, those Play fights were just so game. back and forth over and over again. I mean, honestly, it was anyone's ball game. But there we see Press WE Gaming really taking advantage of their double healers, as well as that Hammonds being able to just kind of roll through the back line. And I was wondering why they even swapped, and the answer was given to me. They had mines, they used it aggressively, they just pushed on in after they used it. That was definitely an interesting map, I have to agree. And last time I said that I thought it was a tank difference, but this time I feel as if it was a damage difference. Crispy Wonton, just every single time, Happy. finding the exact nice kills ease. they needed to push forward. Just how I like every it. time you thought the fight may be lost, Crispy Wonton was there. Absolutely. I mean, that Junkrat, I, I think a big part of why they were able to get so far almost to the end of point one was, you know, they just had their GPS on the flank every time. Someone went around to the right, the tanks weren't really looking, they would just spam get a pick, everyone turns their attention, you just kind of move on to the tanks then. I mean, it's so hard to pay attention when there's a flanker just killing everyone in your backline.
Shepard stayed on that mercy, what I feel may have been a little bit too long as the healing was not quite what they needed, especially with Crispy Wonton being in that back line and finding very quick kills. Mercy cannot heal someone fast enough to take a 1v1 with a junk rat. Absolutely. I think their idea is, you know, if we get the res, then we can win a lost fight. There were some really clutch reses that came in there, but usually the mercy ended up dying after the res was complete, which means even, you know, less healing than you had before. You have to argue, so, is the resurrection of a tank worth the life of a support? And very rarely would that answer be yes, with Mega Man being resurrected at the end of almost three fights in a row. It was so difficult for them to move forward and get any kills. It's, as soon as Mega Man came back to life, the rest of the team had already died. Absolutely. And when you've got a comp like Ana and Bap from Press WE Gaming, that's just so much healing. They just don't ever die. And then you've got the lamp to save people just in case. And I think lamp usage is really, really important because when you've got a Junkrat, that is a great counter is all you know it just completely just destroys tire unless they can you know follow up on it but regardless of that when it you know they're using lamp early for other things then that tire is basically just free unless they kill it or are able to block it and usually that tire was able to get a lot of value even when they are using it early maybe sometimes in situations that i disagree with they should have saved it for it almost always got a kill which would you know stagger blink strike even more I honestly think the Junkrat pick, Junkrat's never really fit into a meta for a really long time, but Crispy Wonton on that Junkrat almost didn't need a meta, he just needed healing. Because yeah, he's still he, finding the meta himself. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's creating, is, is Junkrat the meta or is Crispy Wonton the meta? In the idea of playing this Junkrat, nobody was there to put the pressure necessary on him to get him out of those fights early. I think if Blink Strike would have focused him down a little bit harder, they could have flipped quite a few of those fights in their favor. Absolutely. It's just so hard to pressure. I think, um, you know, usually they would win a fight, especially on their attack. You know, they'd look for that initial and then they'd get really aggressive. I think what they need to do to really be able to step it up and make this a game is they need to be that aggressive all the time. It looks like once they were able to kind of like hit the W, haha, um, <laughs> they were able to really get in there, you know, finish up fights. But all the time they would just kind of wait, 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 wait. And you'd see kind of Crispy Wonton or someone else on Press W E Gaming come in get a pick and it just kind of became windfall from there where they'd all fall together so blink strike just got to keep up the aggression um they can make this a game but press we gaming right now definitely seems like they're in control of this series press we gaming has definitely put a lot more aggression into blink strike than we've seen from blink strike yeah and it looks like we will be going next to king zero after some more substitutions after but lots of a... substitutions coming in <laughs> But this is a great map for Brawl. We might see more of the Ryan Zarya come out. Swapping the team back, I noticed they've swapped the team almost exactly to what it was on Lijong Tower, where we saw a lot of aggression, like you said, from Press WE Gaming. And I think, again, that's exactly what we're going to see. Now entering King's Row. Yeah. I mean, there are definitely other strats. I think Afara is very underrated here. I know I mentioned Farah before. I'm and not a Farah fanboy match. only, I promise. But honestly, if you run a Farah and attack, you get all that span damage in. It's so hard to have a good defense here. You'd also see the Widow, you know, up top looking for a quick pick. Could see some more double shield, you know. There There's are a, a lot of strats. Chance. There's a yeah. very high chance here that we're going to see that double shield. I think that's a great call, is at least on the defense. Most likely a Ryan Zarya from the offense, because in my opinion, if you've got a map to play Ryan Zarya, this is it. This is the map where you can get that aggression you're looking for. And if Press WE Ready Gaming on that imagine. offense runs the Ryan Zarya and they've got the healers they've had, it's going to be exactly what we've been looking for this whole time. Now, this might be a debate on the side of Blink Strike, but they do currently have a Symmetra Torbjorn, Attack and I know a very commonly done strat is, you know, teleporting the Bastion up top, but job, teleporting the Torb turret up top Just is not something to I've really ever seen, piece. but that would be quite a sight. I would love to see some new metas coming from these teams. It's teleporting a turret to the top of the statue would just be... Just incredible to see. It would be so minuscule gameplay-wise, but just to see someone even try it would be fair. Five, I hope I don't cast four, a curse, but three, it looks like we're going to be seeing two, Ryan Zarya on one. both sides, so Attack Brawl on Brawl. The Ryan Zarya comes out, the Brawl on Brawl is going to be huge, and there's a very large chance. Oh, excuse me, a very quick kill onto Who Warrior. The Trap Bomb combo connects. That's an immediate 10 second stagger. Very unlucky to see. Crispy Wonton knows what he's doing with these mines and these traps, and you can see it every time he gets one of these early kills. That's the third game in a row. He's gotten a kill almost right out the gate. He is currently a one-man armor. Right 
Uh, to the top of the statue, as predicted, the turret has made its appearance on top of the statue. Nice. 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 What they, they were looking for. They're forced off the point already with a three tick coming through for Blink Strike. Their offense absolutely incredible. They get a pick on the Hoover right away. And it looks like they're going to get the value they need and the kills that they need. They're pushing forward here, and things are looking very good. The second tick comes through. Mega Man does fall, but with two and three quarter ticks already on the point, you've got a question. Just press W E game and just going to give up the point with Inter falling. The answer has to be yes. Because at this point, they're basically leading the Earth to Blink Strike and immediate cap on the point. Probably the most we've seen Blink Strike come to life today. Absolutely, and uh, wow, that is one heck of a strat we just saw there. You know, I think that they kind of just kind of cut off Crispy Wonton. He had no way of getting back on point. So uh, you just saw Chris WE Gaming kind of lost. They were just kind of going back and forth. They didn't really contest until so there's already two ticks on the point. We got we saw great sleep come out from the on on side of the Blink Strike, and then from there, here we are, five minutes on the clock, rolling through point two. Symmetra Turret's very methodically placed around the map. So it's more as markers than to get kills. It's to indicate where the team is. We see Chris Wonton flanking around the back. The place he's been the entire game. I don't think we've seen him anywhere else. He's been in the kill feed and in the back. And I think that's it. He's got a team. Even though they're losing they already have four. Speak of the devil and he will appear. The tire comes out with a shatter from Regza as well. But no, Blink Strick is still going to come out on top of this. Three ultimates. We're committed to two ultimates. We're committed to that fight. But how did just held left click and wipe the entire team? I mean, welcome to the microwave, right? Sim can do so much damage, especially when you've got a shield to charge it on. And Kayhab just rolled through. Besides, one quick pick from Crispy Wonton on the first point. It has been all blank strikes so far. I think we've seen two eliminations come from Press WE game, but the Brawl Comp is exactly what Blink Strike has been playing the whole time because they're relentless. Jafrizi lets a window out very early, but they're not going to get any value out of that. Most likely just to zone Blink Strike backwards. But they've got five and a half minutes to get halfway to the third point. That's all they have to do. They're already halfway there. They're going to play this corner very aggressively. Four I'm going to go on and the Coming from the Ana here is the first fight press WE Gaming going to confirm they're going to get a kill. Regza falls very early, but that's not going to be enough. For the to reach it. A nano boost onto the Lucio. That has to be an unintentional boost, yo. He, fall, he falls back, wasting the nano boost as well as pushing in. It's not worth it. Inter hey. finds Paladin. And it looks like it's going to be a fight cleanup for press WE Gaming. Wonton already hiding in that back line once again. I mean, that was a great counter grab coming out from Inter. Uh, you, you had to see that coming from a thousand miles away. You know, the grab, Torbo, cut them all in one area. A ton of damage coming out, but the grab kept them in place. And, and a huge easy coming out. And here we are again with the re-engage. Mega Man falls right away, but so does Crispy Wonton. Losing that main tank on the side of the attacking team is much more important than losing a DPS for the defending team here. They need that shield to push up because with Regsa and Inter constantly in that front line, they're not going to get the value they're looking for without a shield to hide behind. And I'm looking at this Ash versus Widow matchup because I think that'll be a huge battle to see going on to this third point. Who is Derpy has that Bob and if he can get it out, excuse me, here comes the Bob. Once again, say the devil's name and he will appear. Bob shooting already, forcing Blink Shark to move back again. A minute and a half has already been stalled. Press WB Gaming got, they got control of this part and they are not going to let it go for free. Absolutely, they seem to be in complete control of this fight right now after getting pushed back. A lot of swaps coming out now. We're seeing a double sniper on the side of Blink Strike. You know, that grab dragon could be big, but they're gonna have to break the lamp to get value out of it. The shatter is ready for Regza, excuse me, and it's gonna be hard to hit. The shatter block. Oh, excuse me! I cast a burst at that very, very hard. Two ultimates come through. It's gonna be an immediate cleanup for Press WE Gaming. They did commit three ultimates, which does see a little bit of overkill. They confirmed the team kill, but now they've put themselves in the ultimate disadvantage. Yeah, absolutely. The nano coming out, especially at the very end already, after the shatter and the tire had been used. A great combo, though, you know, hitting that shatter. I think they were looking for the tire and got a bit distracted. So coming in, they will have the ultimate advantage. Already getting dragon and only 30% away from that grab. Paladin swapping once again, kind of picking up these ultimates. You have to ask, he's got to find the hero he wants much quicker. He's given up a lot of free ult charge. A warrior with a very quick kill onto who's there. The shatter comes through as just the grab. The grab on the Mega Man, but the shatter from Mega Man. He's the center of attention right now. The wall comes out from Jafrizi. Now once again, be used to corner Blink Strike and force him to move back. Interfills himself with an ultimate fire, most likely. Dragon's already from Warrior, as is the grab. This is the combo they need, but the immortality kill has to go. 
negated. Two and a half minutes left on the clock. They're only up by two. They need to push up. There's the grab. He's gonna use the dragon. The immortality kill does come out. They did not fade it properly, so no kills will come to the dragon. Inter finds a kill on the paladin very quickly, but Blink Strike is still holding this point to their own. 3.63 meters away, but Inter is here on the ball, and he is relentless. He's been from two kills already. And it looks like he's not gonna be stopping anytime soon. The total mayhem kill onto Mega Man, but her warrior's not done yet. The warrior and the Zarya are still here for Blink Strike, but they do not get value for a shatter onto the Zarya. Just to clean him up and stagger him like crazy. Both of them will fall to Who's Derpy, and that fight will end in the favor of WD Gaming. This bone's for you! I mean, from what we've seen so far, these last second swaps have been huge for Press WD Gaming. They've gotten so much value out of the Handman as a last second just like contest swap, basically, and they've just take control of it every time. But now we see back on the Ryan Zarya on both sides, and all the economy is kind of reset. A uh, few else coming out from Link Strike, but we'll see if they'll be able to use them to get the kills. Blink Strike oh, is 20% of that shot of this tire. If it's big, it's gonna spell disaster for Blink Strike. They're gonna have to try to eliminate this as quickly as possible. It's blanking around the back. No, but a boop from Shepard negated the entire explosion. I mean, who's gonna be taking out Hawaii? Makes this a very quick 5v6. Excuse me, 4v6. Press WB Gaming has almost confirmed this fight for themselves as they've eliminated half the team already and with only a minute left, Link Strike's gonna have to start just pressing Q and playing. Drexa got all the way behind um, yeah. the Ryan on the side of Mega Man and somehow was able to still kill him as the whole team was looking at him, able to charge him out. I mean, that's just, I don't know if that's just incredibly skilled or incredibly lucky. Very often times coming from a Reinhardt one trick, mostly myself, those, sh those charges, at least in my experience, are often just quite lucky. He's still winning there to help you. A fantastic grab come on. The immortality field again, they did not make it properly. They still not get the value they're looking for. Time and time again, Link Strike hit the entire combo. A very difficult combo to nail, and then they don't eliminate the immortality field fast enough, negating both of the ultimates and putting them to waste. Inter just cleaning up right now. Max charged Zarya in the back line. Already confirmed two kills. 30 seconds, we're gonna see a Winston swap. Most likely just to engage and get a little more aggressive. Yeah, and on the side of Press W Gaming, all they have right now is a Shatter. A few more on the side of Blink Streak. I don't think they've used the beat in a while, so they've held me for a very we long see time. For Shatter here. He's behind them. Is it coming? Gregs is, uh, he's got the Shatter as soon as the bubble goes down. I expect to see the one. He gets free to the Shatter's Mega Man. The High Noon comes out and does the beat. The Immortality Field coming out from Jafrizi as well. In overtime, Blink Strike hits a massive Shatter. Here comes the Shatter from Mega Man. He picks up three, and it looks like Blink Strike's finally going to be able to move into this a little bit further than they expected. The first really large Shatter we've seen from Mega Man in what feels like an eternity. Inter back out of that Wrecking Ball just to stall for as long as possible. And in the overtime, if they lose a single fighter here, it's going to spell disaster the warrior in the back line on the tracer a tire coming out from crispy on time we've seen how disastrous these can be it's running out the nano boost onto the winston as well the tire is going to explode picks up one but it might not have been enough Link Strike has already ended this fight. The tire took too long to explode, and nobody was there to capitalize on the remaining damage. Crispy wants on the point on his own, but will be very quickly eliminated. And in the overtime, Link Strike will finally connect to that third point. Rexa was so close to hitting a huge shatter. I think he got a little bit greedy, it waited a little bit too long. And that bubble came out from the winds in a last second swap, really just to contest. And he had no idea that the Ryan was behind him. You know, sometimes it's just better to be lucky than good. Absolutely, that Winston swap just was exactly what they needed and nobody knew. It was exactly what they were looking for, but they didn't even know what to look for. The Winston bubble saved the day as Regza had at least a four-man shatter lined up right there. Nobody looked into that little room and that's all he needed was that little bit of free space to get much more aggressive. Absolutely, but on the bright side for Press WE Gaming, they were able to hold off over five minutes into what Ready would be zero battle. seconds left in the time bank now for Blink Strike, so... All they gotta do is get a minute on the clock to be able to at least draw this map. Like I said at the beginning, defending first is a slight advantage, something that we've seen before as the attacking team Attackers in the second round incoming. knows exactly what they have to do and really how far they need to get. Something that is surprising is as the gates have not opened and swapping can still happen, Inter is on the Orissa. And running an offensive Orissa before capping first point is very unusual. It looks like they might be trying to go for some really nice pull punch combos. They are running the Doomfist. Um, but as we see, it is hammer time once again. 
Hot Warrior on the Torb, so that could be really good at like kind of making them swallow off the Doom. Really good to get rid of dive heroes. Yeah, Hot Warrior possibly playing that Torbjorn just to poke that little bit of extra damage. I think gates open and the fight begins. We're gonna see what's gonna happen. A very large flame from Mega Man, already 20% to the Shatter. If he can form it quickly, he can turn this fight around within 60 seconds. We know he is well off. A big nade coming from the Ana here. Hot Warrior does find Crispy Wildcat as he predicted. The pole does come down the engine, but the dude is just not there to clean up on it. Kaladin's got the hacker. Warrior with another kill. The Torbjorn is here. You never see this. The freeze is on point, but the Ana nades are bigger. And just like that, with a Torbjorn pick, Blink Strike wins that fight. Yeah, it looks like Crispy kind of went to kill the turret, and Hot Warrior saw it, and he was like, not my baby, not today. And he just kind of chased him down and won the 1v1. That turret is, you know, a deterrent. Let's stop right there as we get into this next fight. But yeah, it's really good at countering him. Mega Man, 76% of that shatter. Regs at 90%, even though Regs are locked. It's the fight. His shatter is here. Mega Man gets pinned, and if he kills Mega Man, the shatter is going to come through. It's going to be massive. It's going to be no The shatter does come through, picks up two. Paladin finds who's derpy, but it's already falling into much more dangerous for the defending guy. Mega Man takes out the one hot and the bomb comes out for the one who's half the game. He's immediately put to sleep by Hoodie. The beat coming out, possibly not the best use of the beat, but if it wins them the point, it was all worth it. Into swapping with the Azaria, into a very smart Azaria. Tapping the point much later than Blink Strike, but still, with lots of time in the bank. I'm honestly not sure how that fight went that way. It's just all it's being thrown back and forth. I, I mean, did you see that Shatter? He basically flew Mega Man all the way up there, and he was bubbled when it happened, too. The Shatter was definitely unusual, as I think he just pressed Q because he could, rather than because he had to. He was looking to get early kills in what seemed like an already won fight. A lot of damage was being put on the Blink Strike, but they instead decided to use every ultimate that they had to beat as well. So it was very as the fight had already seen one, one, a very big oh, grab from the Blink Strike right away. The Molten Core is well taking off two. They're the now going to be able to get very, very aggressive as pushing into this team is going to be dangerous. Oh, They're down both of their tanks. Mega Man could even get a free out. shatter here if he'd like, but the anti from Hoodie may push them off just long enough for the tanks to return. <laughs> Did Mega that Man take out Hoodie a go. massive stagger. Did you see that charge at the end? It looked like it stopped right at, oh, as he was about to hit the Zarya. Very unusual, possibly just unfortunate timing. But um, right now, it looks like they're able to get back at that uh, control right at the choke, which is so important, even though they don't have a May. Being able to kind of stop them here, a really great advantage right now for Blink on this defense. I always call this point point one and a half because so many people, their run ends here and they get stalled right here on this corner. It's a very difficult spot to break one team. Ooh, the massive shatter coming from Mega Man picking up three kills. The grab again almost wasted. The anti nade comes through and Mega Man will fall for three falling on the side of the team. Oh, press the B-Wing. Mega Man gets the instruction as well and a nano boost being committed to the fight as well. From Blink Strike. Inter is just cleaning up the back line. The nano boost wasn't enough. Inter got four kills in that fight. And with Crispy Wonton in the back line already, it's going to be very difficult for Blink Strike to do anything other than hold S. Ironically enough, press W will make them press S. They're going to have to back out of this fight. Chris is losing their lives. They're committing the grab as well. They're getting way too greedy in this fight. Mega Man fell in the grab, could not be capitalized on, but they're just pressing Q to hold off for as long as possible. But now they put themselves in a serious ultimate disadvantage as there's three on one side and one on the other. They were able to pick off that May though, and they'll be able to recontest this right probably as it's about to get to the checkpoint. The checkpoint looks like it's gonna be capped as they just don't have the numbers to get there. Oh, Shepard slept on the cart, the bomb coming out of the but Shepard is really caught out in the open here. The beat committed very early, they're gonna win this fight, whether Blink Strike wants them to or not. A, a smaller Shepard comes through, picking up only two, but his team is very quick through there to pick up the rest of the team. The point is going to be capped, and they too will have four minutes to push this point as far as possible. Blink Strike's really gonna have to come back to life like we saw in those first two points of this to win this. Hot Warrior went for a hammer kill on Zarya, who then got nanoed, basically killed his entire team. How uh, are you getting greedy looking for that that hammer kill? I mean, it's it's something of legends, right? But yeah, I mean, that was just a crazy fight. All coming back and forth, and it looks like Press WE Gaming just able to get back at it a little bit quicker, and it looks like Mega Man's in trouble. Regs the lens, the charger with the wall coming up, and the grab coming out of both. Mega Man is immediately eliminated. The grab, Blizzard, a very common combo. How Warrior uses the ultimate, but at this point, you've got to ask, how much has that Torbjorn done since the very first fight? The nano boost on the Ash is absolutely a nano boost of Death 
Inspiration's Paladin is the sole survivor of the team to hold on to the point for as long as possible, but the purple comes through and you go be eliminated just in time for Mega Man to return. Mega Man hits a huge shatter, actually, half the team, but it's not going to be enough as Crispy Wonton on the Doof is going to wipe them one by one. The shatter was huge, but nobody was there to capitalize. Regza goes to shatter her warrior and misses her warrior now on that tracer with six on the cart in two and a half minutes. On the in the clock right now, Bob coming through. Bob gets walled, he gets walled off the point. He's not gonna touch the point in time, he's not close enough to contest. But Mega Man and the ball have made it back in time. Hoodie is just here to clean up Shepard, and yeah, Mega Man falls very low. He's got one support out there, but Regs is not here for the supports. He's here to clean up the tanks. Two and a half minutes. Blink Strike's gonna have to put on the stall of a lifetime to continue in this point any longer. The ball eliminated, that's gonna be. Exactly what they needed. Shepard makes it back to point. A warrior still here with the pulse. Shepard gets the kill onto Inter. This could be huge. This could be the turnaround they needed. This Mega Man is here once again, but he's charged on point and purple. immediately eliminated. We hear a Nenabu come through onto Regza, and he gets a double kill. And it looks like with two minutes on the clock, they will be able to confirm this third round. Wow. Just wow. I mean, it looks like Blink Strike had a great defense. It looks like they were going to at least, you know, get some more time off the clock. And then they just kind of fell apart halfway through point two. Yep. So many alts thrown, and they were never able to get a real recontest, especially on point three. Uh, they had to hold so far back because there was a huge sleep on the Mega Man. They used the bubble early, and then he ended up getting charged anyway. He got grabbed, and then from there, it was just, we're going to run through this point. I mean, they did kill some time off the clock with a last second contest, but right now, Press WE Gaming has about two minutes to clean this up. Press WE Gaming has two Ready minutes to get 33% of the first point. That's going to be a very difficult thing to contest as we saw how aggressive this team can get. They're already on the Wrecking Ball Diva. They're going to try to roll right in and right through Blink Strike here. Attackers you really think they're going to run this? I mean, it's possible. I, I think they might switch, but if Honestly, they do, I think. I think if they're going to look for early kills here, they've got the Discord Orb, they've got the Quick Engage, they've got the Quick Disengage. Okay, no more no more Discord Orb, but the Lucio Speed Boost almost furthers my point of, or strengthens my ID here that they're going to push in and get really aggressive. Absolutely, they're just going to be looking for the DPS to get quick picks, all that damage coming out. Reaper, or Tank Buster, I mean, we've already seen how good they are with the junk. And a Winston Hammond Dive, it could be very, very good. The warrior still on that Torbjorn, I think that might be the final nail in this coffin, is Torbjorn's going to have to get a lot of value to be worth it. The fight does finally begin, the Winston Ball, and with the turret already gone, the Torbjorn's already at risk of being completely worthless. Who's jerky putting a lot of pressure on a Mega Man, but Inter does fall. This is exactly the kill Blink Strike needed to win this fight. If they win this fight, they'll only have to hope for one more good push. But Crispy Wonton takes out Paladin with fantastically placed grenades. A huge anti did coming through as well. Who's jerky falls, but Crispy Wonton in that back line. He's purple and half health, but somebody's gonna have to get aggressive. No, he will die. The, the fall does come through from Regza on the ball. Both tanks are back, but the rest of the team isn't. Regza falling very quickly, staggering himself. Paladin is swapping to that leg, trying to get this fight as quickly as possible with massive anti nades coming from Hoodie this entire fight. It's going to be really difficult for these supports to keep this team alive. Cody has been doing a great job all game of getting huge anti nades, but right now it does not look like capitalized. Switching off now of that dive to a brawl comp, uh, but ultimate economy is looking pretty good right now for Blink Strike. They may be able to hold on to this. With a minute left on the clock, they're going to have to get Crispy Wonton off that high ground, or that spells disaster. The shield already broken. There goes Mega Man. The Cold Lessons comes out to try to save him, but it's not going to be enough. The Cold Lessons also wakes up Regza, who was sleeping. Regza falling. All Reinhardts are out of this fight. The turret goes down. Crispy Wonton still on that high ground, still in that back line, getting dangerously close to that tire. And if that tire comes out, it could spell a serious disaster here for Blink Strike. Absolutely, and he's so close to getting it. They also have the Nano coming online. Nano's on both sides. They need this grab to come online immediately, he's even if it's just to get them off point. They're gonna need this grab. He's gonna have to press Q as soon as he gets it, especially with that nano boost coming through. Both nano boosts come through under the Rhine. It's now a Rhine v Rhine fight. If you love this team, who can swing that hammer a little bit better? The grab and come through. It's absolutely massive, but the beat comes through as well, making it completely negatable. The shadow coming through from Mega Man. They're committing a lot of ultimates, but it is technically last fight. They're down Mega Man, but they are up by one. Both Rhines are out of the fight and they're missing their tank buster. This is the fight. If this tire is big, it will spell disaster we cross our fingers and we hope no it's a double here they've got them on point blink strike's gonna have to pray for a miracle here they've got to get rid of this right crispy wants on the only person on point the coalescence come through as well can regs a touch in time or is this the tie of the no regs comes through and solo shatters her warrior that's exactly what they needed Mega Man makes it back, but with Reaper, the tank buster there this is gonna be the end of an era and it looks like they will 3-0 the match like you said 3-0 going to press we gaming uh 
really, really close last map, honestly, even with two minutes in the time bank, um, it came down really to just Play getting that tire game. online. The very that end. absolutely just broke the gates wide open and Blink Strike could no longer hold the defense. Yeah, again, I think not playing a bat when you know the other team is going to be playing that junk, getting a lot of value out of him, um, comes down to just hero selection. It's a, it's a very are. high risk, high reward situation to play not a Baptiste against that junk rat, but it's something that apparently they felt that they were going to do. And we definitely Blink Strike played their best on that final map. And I almost wish they could have took us to that draw so we could continue watching these fantastic teams. Yeah, and while they might have lost 3-0 today, there's plenty of time in this season to get back up there, get some wins. So I, I don't think this is the last we've heard of Blank Strike by Oh, anyone. absolutely not. Just a little bit of focus and a little bit of concentration on what they can do, and we're really going to see Blank Strike come to life. So many of those maps, they were just, just I felt just under the bar of where they wanted to be to really win these maps. You know, it's always kind of the beginning of a season where you're still figuring stuff out. Maybe some new team members came in trying to figure out comms and stuff like that. So, you know, a few weeks from now, this could be a completely different team, a well-oiled machine. But Press WE Gaming already looking like a well-oiled machine. Definitely a contender to look out for as we go through this season. Absolutely. Press WE Gaming game one. They're not here to play around. They won their preseason game. They won their first game. Things are looking really, really good. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, I think some of the stands out today that we saw were Crispy Wanton, obviously, and that Junkrat really taking control of the situation. But Hoodie on that Ana, I mean, those nades as a flex support player myself were incredible. So much value, so many times where they basically were able to clean up because of that. So, you know, give a thank you to your flex support players. And <laughs> absolutely. I don't think we saw a grab that wasn't naded immediately after. Hoodie had such good nade placement that entire game. It was every single one was just relentless. Well, I think that's it for us tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. But we do have some very exciting games coming up on Thursday and Friday. We will see you guys then. Have a good one.